another rejection so are you also in a similar situation where you're really afraid to check your inbox because of the fear of rejections i was in the same place as well well not the same position exactly because too many rejections made me numb to that feeling Hello guys, welcome to another video. I'm Mozam, a current incoming software engineer at Google. I'm someone who has interviewed at over 40 companies and has gotten dozens of rejections with generic cliche emails of how those companies want to stay connected with me in the future. So today I'll be talking about interviewing and how you could become better at it. And the first thing that I would like to say is that a lot of people consider interviewing to be just generically spamming lead code or algo expert questions and they just intend to become better at it through this process. Well, I'm going to break it for you and it's not exactly the same thing. Doing a lot of lead code questions and becoming good at problem solving is just one part of the aspect of becoming good at coding interviews. You could be a really good engineer who knows how to solve complex problems but still manage to fail your interviews because of the complexities that go into them and I had to learn this the hard way. Well, the first point that I would like to make is that you should never say that you know better to the interviewer. So as funny as it may sound, but this actually happened to me in one of my very first interviews where the interview tried to suggest something to me and I was like that my solution works better than this and I don't want to consider your solution. Well, I was a bit rude to the interviewer and I saw it right away. I realized my mistake, but I knew it there and then that I was rejected in this interview and I got rejected. I wasn't called to the next round. I would just like to say that the interviews are your friends. Make sure you're listening to them because they're trying to guide you in the right direction. They want to see whether you're going to to communicate well in a team even if they're giving you a suggestion and you want to counter them be very very polite to them and try to turn it into a discussion rather than just blatantly saying that i don't want to listen to your opinion the second point that i want to make is that you should not sit with people who have landed their jobs or internships so if your girlfriend has landed her dream job or internship then just break up with her nice well, seriously getting to the point, what I mean by this is that you should sit with like-minded people who are sharing your journey, who are going to inspire you to do more. If you're going to be sitting with people who are also looking for internships and jobs, you're going to see their struggle. You're not going to feel bad about it. Rather, what personally happened for me was that a lot of the people who had gotten their jobs or internships or who had return offers, unlike me, who didn't, they really called out and made me feel bad by saying that, oh, you should come join us at this party. You should come and play with us. You should do this and then. And no, you don't want to hang out with such people. You can take tips from them. You can learn how they got their internships and jobs. But I really want you to sit with like-minded people and those like-minded people will also help you in your problem solving because they're going to be the same people who are going to be taking your mock interviews or who you will be doing mock interviews for. And this will enable you to really learn how to interview better now the third point that I want to mention is that mock interviews are not to be taken lightly. They're super important. They'll help you to become better at the skill of interviewing. The most important thing in an interview is the way that you communicate. You want to blurt out all of your thoughts. You want to tell the interview what you're thinking at the moment, in which direction you are going in, because the interviewer will be able to guide you accordingly. Now the next tip that I'm giving is a bonus tip, but you want to keep this in mind is that apart from mock interviews, you want to make sure that you're applying a lot. A lot of my friends around me, what they did was that they didn't really apply to very very small companies because they said that they wouldn't want to work there but i actually looked at this differently because i thought that applying to these companies meant more interviews and more interviews means real life experience and now real life interviews are even better than mock interviews this is the next stage that you want to take it to and giving more interview means more real life experience it will allow you to get better at interviewing it is even better than mock interviews i would say so make sure that you're applying to a lot of companies another thing that i noticed and a lot of my friends did the same thing is that we used to skip the space and time complexity a lot because doing the question can take a lot of toll on your mind and once you're done you really feel relieved and you want to go to the next question and it really makes it easy for you to skip the time and space complexity analysis and in most cases it can make or break your interview depending on the interview's mood for me personally once i started doing this it really allowed me to get better at this skill now the next tip is that i did not really 
spam algo expert or lead code questions and i mentioned this in another video that i only did about 100 questions in two months which allowed me to get into google and the thing was that i used to discuss my questions with my peers i used to spend quality time on each question i used to struggle through the problem and you know discussing the question with your peers really allows you to make core memory about the question once you're discussing something and you're analyzing very carefully you're also listening to opinions of other people and how they are approaching some problem and this technique worked perfectly for me because my peers really allowed me to see it from another perspective now the next tip is is that a lot of people tend to ignore the code quality that they're writing within an interview and why this really happens is is that in a lot of interviews you're going to be discussing the question it will take up most of the time and when the interview really says you to write the code there's not going to be much time left and you're going to be in a rush this is where it can make or break your interview because if you're writing bad code and you're not really modularizing it you're not writing code according to the company's coding practices and this will be something which the interviewer is going to notice now it really depends on the amount of time that you have if you have like ample time and you can break it down or modularize your code then you should do it otherwise you should at least mention that whilst you're writing the code that if you were given enough time that you're going to make these into separate functions and do it accordingly because if you're having less time then that will at least let the interviewer know about how you were thinking about breaking your code into smaller chunks i'm going to summarize the last few tips that i have for you and they are that you should always start doing your questions for your practice from easy to harder questions because a lot of the fundamentals are within the easier questions and they're going to help you in the medium and harder questions and i would suggest you that you also time yourself because once you're near an interview you want to get into that time setting because that will really allow you to see whether you're going to be able to complete the question within the given time i would say that once you're able to do medium style questions in 45 minutes then you should be good to go and the ending tip that i have for you is that if you're stuck in an interview and let's say that you're completely blank start spamming data structures at the interview hash map i'll use the hash map if I'm completely blank, what I would do is, so I would start naming out data structures. Maybe can I use a binary tree? Can I use a linked list? Can I use a hash map? Try to see how these data structures can help your question because that will really allow you, your interview to see that you're not quiet and that you're still trying to think about the various data structures. And they will also try to hint you, maybe if I say, can I use a linked list? And the interviewer might give you a go and say, yeah, do you want to dive more into it? And then you know that this question is going to be solved using a linked list. So yeah, that's the big hack. So I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video and that you have some key takeaways from this and that it will help you in your future coding interviews. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, see you guys in the next video.